Hello everyone, and welcome to this video, which is in our Great Engine Game series and our Crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler, and we are having a look at another odds game of Leela's, this time with Rook Odds. And uh, yeah, it just often amazes me how um, some of my favourite openings just look even more dangerous without a Rook on A1. And um, yeah, the famish is uh, these sort of attacks with um, uh, pawns on F3 and E4. Just uh, solidifying the uh, the white centre and then the H pawn running up, just as the uh, start signal for a huge attack. How yeah, Leela seems to make these work so well without that rook on A1. And uh, this is a great example. Play against uh, 2,500 uh, um, Lee chess players who played lots and lots of games at uh, at various odds um, settings. So let's have a look at this. Just a, a King's Indian, F3, E4, a little well-known move order to uh, try and avoid the, the, the pure Grunfeld and get into a, a King's Indian. And um, Black plays the move Knight, C6, which is the uh, the Pano variation. Um, actually, normally you play it after D6, playing it with Knight, C6 very early. Um, the idea is that um, if you do something like Bishop, B3, Black goes to, uh, E5 and Knight D4, and then actually is threatening to go C5, and if D takes C6, then D takes C6 to uh, to keep the knight um, um, cemented there. It's a trick I first saw in uh, an old monograph by um, the American IM John Watson um, on uh, the Pano King's Indian, which was very very interesting. Probably written about 1982, 1983. Really interesting stuff. But Leela reacted by uh, by playing D5, so kicking the knight away. Knight went to b4, and then Leela starts with h4. So already just uh, starting up the uh, the attack there. Um, yeah, I mean, this is somewhat quicker than you're used to. Um, normally you develop a little bit, maybe put the bishop on e3, queen on d2, maybe even castle queen side. But, well, if the rook on a1 isn't there, there's no need to develop it. So Leela plays knight e2, c6 from black, and a3, knight a6. And now h5. So yeah, I mean, um, already, you know, Leela obviously is uh, creating uh, danger. And uh, I mean, that's the first step to uh, to getting mistakes from human players, right? I mean, if human players start feeling uh, in danger, then they start making mistakes. And uh, well, this is uh, the sort of play that Leela's playing at odds is absolutely uh, tuned to um, provoking that, you know, even at uh, longer time controls, of course. So... Yeah, I mean, what's the best way for uh, for Black to play? The the, the um, I mean, it's not like there's any immediate danger at the moment, so you could uh, take it a little bit slower. The engines were sort of suggesting, <coughs> pardon me, takes takes and knight c5, and just uh, playing uh, a bit more normally. Black played the move uh, e6, which is uh, fine too. Just looking to uh, open up the center, swap off some pawns in the center, and then open the c and the e e e lines. And Leela took an interesting decision here, um, not one you normally see in the um, uh, in the same-ish, but uh, I guess the reasoning is that uh, Black's knight is on a6, somewhat far away from the centre, so Black hasn't got very good control um, of the uh, of the centre. So White feels uh, able to play d takes c6, and after b takes c6 to play g4. And uh, yeah, I mean this um, White might be looking for g5. White might be looking for um, just something like uh, like this, but you know, not allow the knight to come to h5. This pawn on g4 has got many different ideas. Now, black does the um, the kind of the approved uh, uh, reaction that um, you know when uh, your opponent's attacking on the wing, then you should break in the center. But certainly, as we saw in the game, um, um, it's in our reengineering the chess classic series, Mariotti against Gligorich. It's not always just doing a break that's important. Sometimes it's more about creating pressure in the centre. And here Leela's able just to keep the centre closed, actually, with e5, knight d7 and f4, and keep the pieces closed uh, behind the uh, the centre. So it's quite interesting how the, uh, the engines react. I mean, uh, Stockfish, always very keen just to um, to break open the centre like this and uh, follow up with um, with bishop takes e5 and say, well, OK, at least I've managed to um, uh, to break this wall of pawns in the centre and, um, yeah, I'll be able to um, uh, to expand a bit more in the centre later. 
as always, I mean, I think you have to uh, to make the point that Lila will make it a bit dangerous anyway. You know, um, whatever you do. But um, um, but this looks like a, quite a decent way of playing. And um, what well, black plays is fine. F6 just uh, already attacking the five pawn. But it starts getting quite sharp because after knight d4, um, attacking these two pawns, um, then black's got to start being uh, a little bit precise here. For example, um, queen e8 was what the engines thought were best. But uh, yeah, this is the uh, stockfish suggestion. And uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, there's obviously quite a lot of confusion happening here. You know, it's not at all easy to to work out what um, what black should play or what is even happening in the position. Uh, black played knight dc5. Um, not bad either. Knight uh, takes c6, queen e8, c takes d5 from Leela. I suppose this is one key example where the, you know, um, players, um, yeah, human players tend to, um, uh, yeah, just bring Leela's pieces forward uh, to uh, to attack their position. And, uh, yeah, with sort of automatic recaptures, I guess. I think you see this a lot in um, in these odds games. And it's really something that, um, I mean, automatic recaptures are something that, you know, human players really do need to avoid. It's what you always uh, try and teach beginners somehow as well, that, uh, you know, if your opponent um, sort of moves something, offering an exchange, don't automatically exchange. You know, see, do I want to exchange the piece? Could I get the exchange in a favourable um, in a favorable way? And, um, yeah, what uh, Black played here, I mean, Bishop B7 would be um, would be decent. It's still very dangerous, eh? but um, but it's it's good for Black. Or F takes E5, you know, just sort of going against the plans that White is playing, you know. And uh, by now it's it's getting pretty crazy, right? I mean, stuff like this and uh, H6 coming in and Knight E7 and all this stuff, you know, it's it, it, it's tricky. But um, it would give um, uh, Black a better chance of fighting what White's doing. Black played E takes D5 and after Knight takes D5, we're at 0, 0, 0 already. Um, of course, the problem is that queen c6, knight e7 check is happening. And yeah, now that the knight's been brought into play, I mean, we've got very serious uh, knight e7 checks. And after king h8, we're going to have h takes g6. I mean, you know, this is really, really serious. And of course, you know, there was basically one way for black to play, and that was to, to play the move rook f7 here um, to uh, stop a knight coming into e7. It has to be done. It's the only way. Um, I mean, the problem is for, for black that um, we've got moves like bishop b5, for example, or rather takes, takes first, and bishop b5 looking for, for knight e7 checks, and uh, this h file is open. You know, there's we've got queen f3 to h3 coming in. You know, there's a lot of danger, even though white's position is very loose. I mean, you know, these two knights are doing absolutely nothing. This extra rook is not involved at the moment, so, you know, white's got some some considerable amount of time in order to um in order to um to keep on attacking there but you had absolutely had to stop um knight d7 that's another thing that uh, you know humans are, are not very good at just sort of kind of spotting the main threat and then just just trying to stop it you know i mean that's uh because black played f takes c5 here and now we've moved on to plus nine so uh you know within uh, two moves we've moved from minus five to uh, to plus nine and uh, but of course, that's entirely due to the type of position that uh, that Leela has created here. So knight d7 check played, king h8, h takes. We're threatening uh, rook takes h7 checkmate now, h6 and f5. And I mean, look, I mean, these pieces are invulnerable. And uh, yeah, black's uh, white's just threatening, uh, you know, bishop h6 followed by rook h6 or bishop h6 followed by queen d2 and queen h6. It's just absolutely killing Black tried to uh, to keep it tight at the back, but that was never going to succeed. Bishop h6 takes and then f6. Very nice threat of uh, g7, uh, for example. Black played queen f6 and queen d8 check. And black resigned because uh, after king g7, queen g8 is checkmate. A really, really nice game. I mean, I, I said it, it really impressed me because it's a, a same as King's Indian, which I've played all my life. And, uh, well, seeing the power of this line without a rook on a1, you know, really makes you think, wow, I should believe in my attacks just a little bit more. But I think the, the key, you know, problem for black was kind of automatically exchanging and just giving Leela Tempe to bring the pieces towards the king. And it goes quickly. It goes really quickly, way more quickly than you'd ever dream. But, um, you know, the, the advantage of the rook 
gets eaten up by by dynamic compensation really really quickly you know and uh, as soon as the king's in danger you know uh, i think it's uh, it's kind of too late already you know and uh, and that's what lila proved in uh, in this game they're really nice when i saw it happen and uh, just thought wow what a game so we are hope you're enjoying these i've got plenty more to come hope you're uh, still keen and uh, hope to see you at the next video thanks for watching